Hey guys, this is Irate Spartan 13. I'm at the battlefield of the Battle of Cowpens in South Carolina, and we're standing from the British Army's view. And um, what we had at Cowpens was Tarleton's, um, the the British Legion. We had 16th Light Infantry, Royal Artillery, and then we had the Private, or excuse me, the 7th Fusiliers. This is a private, and then this is. Um, the 71st Highlanders, who was all, were also known as Frazier's Highlanders. And then at the battle itself, you can see basically what happened. You have the British coming down this road here, which is called the old, the Green, um, Green River Road. And they came down the road, and the Americans met them basically in three lines. And you can see why this strategy was so effective as we walk this, because... Um, Daniel Morgan and the Americans really, really planned this out well. Um, they really had to fight here, and they they just really planned, found good terrain, and were ready for the British. Let's take a look at the battlefield a little bit. We'll walk it for a little bit. I just wanted to do um, a short video. It's Sunday here, so I'm pretty much the only one here, and it is a beautiful battlefield. So this is the perspective from the British on... Um, the day of the battle. Now, the day of the battle was actually fought in January. I think it was January 17th. So this would not look like this during the battle. The, the trees would have no leaves on them. And if you look, this is looking down the road that they, they marched down. The It's nice. This was called the cow pens for a reason. It's where the cows were. And this field has been restored to what it looked like during the battle. Um, and so the British were coming down the road here. They had two light cannons. And I think they were called grasshoppers and uh, the 18 artillerymen. And they deployed their cannon just about here, I think. And they started um, blasting away at what they saw ahead of them, which were militia. And basically what the militia was, was sharpshooters. And so this they came marching down the, uh, the old green road here, Green River Road. And you can look on their right, see that's woods and that's really swampy it's woods and swampy and you've got this nice open terrain here and then over here to your left it gets back into the, the swampy land so you've got this nice little open field a limited nice limited battlefield for the number of troops engaged the british had i think approximately 1200 troops here and the americans had about 1800 so you had about 3000 troops scrapping here on that day so the british and the british were they were, they were confident, and they were a confident bunch. And um, so they deployed their cannon here, these these small cannon, and um, were blasting away at the, the Americans. The Americans, Morgan had set the Americans up in three lines. The first line was sharpshooters, basically. And the sharpshooters were really a harassment force. And I think, um, as I recall, um, the British cavalry drove them off. And they went back to the second line. But these guys were were putting down some some heat on the British. And they were good. They were good shots. So they were able to knock down a lot of the British officers. So we come to here, which is, they're just letting you know about the restoration project that's going on. Where they're trying to restore the battlefield to the, the original way it looked with the grassy metals. Which I think is really cool. Take a look at that. So the British were marching down this road, and they come into, now you're coming up a little hill here. I mean, you can see it. I mean, being here, it's a lot easier to see it. It's a sway, we're in a swale right now, and they're coming up a swale. I'm trying to get a crisp walk, because there are some people behind me. So you're coming up this nice little swale, up this little hill, and it's not much of a hill, it's just enough of an incline. Just enough of an incline for someone to be in an elevated position of you. Shooting down at you. Man, it's a beautiful day. A little bit of clouds. It's warm. South Carolina in June gets a little bit warm. I happen to be here for just one day visiting family but there's no way I'm gonna come to the cow pens my sister lives about 15 minutes away from here there's no way I'm gonna come here without coming to this battlefield it's just too 
too cool. So we got on top of this nice little swale here. And then we'll be coming up to where the sharpshooters were, the first line of the Continental's defense. And look, we've got the first line coming up here. And what's interesting about the defense and the lines here is the distance. So get a sense how far these troops were apart in the lines. And you don't get this sense looking on a map than looking at the left. Again, we're marching up this, we're marching the way the British would have marched, right up the, the main road here. So, and here we are. So as soon as they crest that hill on the reverse slope, guess who's waiting for them? Yep, sharpshooters. They're probably on the slope too, probably on the non-military crest. And this is the Americans looking down. I mean, they're, they're looking down this way and it's it's a pretty good position for sh for sharpshooters. So here's the sharpshooters at the skirmish line. Uh, according to the um, uh, the marker here, it says they dropped two thirds of the British officers. The skir the the sharpshooters here did, and of course at the battlefield you've got a little marker for the for the sharpshooter here. You got to keep in mind these battlefields back in the day. You know, um, I was in Gettysburg. And Gettysburg, we're looking now for, as, from the, the Continentals' viewpoint against the British. These battlefields and these, these woods were managed, and they tended to be managed, especially Gettysburg. You know, Gettysburg, you go up on top of Culp's Hill, and it's like, wow, how could anybody see anything? Well, because there were critters eating all the, all the, all the low-hanging grass. So you didn't have all this you know, high grass. But in this particular battlefield, according to um, what the, the park's doing here, this is what it looked like. It just would have been in January. So you, these fields would have been more open. So the British, we're gonna turn back and go back on British perspective. They break this first line, which is a darn good position. And waiting for them after they do that. Now, you know, you're marching forward, you're confident, and someone starts picking off your officers. And I mean, if two thirds of your officers are already down, you get to this point and you don't realize you're only one third of the way through the American lines. I mean, Daniel Morgan's set this up. He's got this nice little narrow field here with woods on the right, as again, British perspective, woods on your left, nice little open field. And you break those skirmishers, your cavalry rides up, they start running back to the next line. And then boom, you run into the second line. And now we're going to turn and look back. And look, they get over this hill and they've got a nice little swale. The British do as they're marching forward. Another swale on the field with the road in the middle. Over to the right, the train's a little more favorable for them. But guess what? Here we are, second line. That's all, that's the whole distance between the first and second line. But uh, you look at that sign, I'd say 120 yards, 100, 120 meters, somewhere around there. That's about it. And here's another line. This is the militia. And then back there, you got some folks down there. You've got the third line. And it's not very far. So we'll walk that. So here where Daniel Morgan just wanted them to get off a couple rounds. Just give me a couple rounds into them. Just blast into them twice and pull back. We're gonna walk down the road to the third line. And again, we'll see how far, how long it takes. I mean, this, this, the, I think the real genius here of this defensive plan is look at the spacing. Think in terms of the weapons back in the time. 
I mean, these guys are using muskets. The British are using brown best muskets. You know, the Continentals, they're using whatever they can. Probably some brown best muskets, but whatever they can get their hands on. The regulars, I'm not sure what they used. Probably a smooth bore muzzle loader, similar to the brown best style. But we're walking, and look where we are already. Third line. And of course you have the so now you're the British. You've just broke the second the second line of militia who fired a couple rounds into you, at least one round, and then they pulled back. And here we are again. Perfect distance for the weapons of the time. Boom. Little swale, nice elevated position, and it's not that elevated. It's elevated enough so that you're looking down at them. They're coming up at you. And then you've got the light infantry marker over there to the right where there's some, some folks over there. And here's the third line. And here's where the Continental Army was sitting. And so now you've got regulars here waiting for you. And you've had to bust through two lines. You're disordered and you've come into ordered ranks and they're blasting away. Here's the view. Spot right there. Pretty cool. This is really where the battle gets... Um, gets its you know penultimate moment the highlanders come in and the highlanders basically if i recall correctly i think they re tried to reform and what happened was when the highlanders are trying to reform they the rest of the british look at them and say oh the highlanders are pulling back and the the whole the whole rest of the army starts pulling back and then things start falling apart from there this is the washington light infantry monument it's a monument uh, that was erected here in the 1800s. Not, not the most. Uh, and seeing the monuments at Gettysburg, not the most fancy monument, but a nice monument nonetheless to the to the um, to the troops and what happened here at Cowpens. And this is this is the point right here. And this, the reason they elect, erected that monument here, third line, this is where it went down right here. This is a pretty amazing. <laughs> you have to go through my video and correct any errors I have. I'm sure I'm going to have some because I've. There's a great book on the Battle of Cowpens, and it's called The Devil of a Whooping. And I read it like five years ago. Again, this is this is on the American right, looking back down the down the field at the British coming at you. And this is you know keep in mind. At the time, this field's open and it's winter. So you've got a nice open field and nice open fields of fire. They're coming right down a wonderful little funnel into a killing sack. And eventually what ends up happening is a double envelopment. The Continentals, you get a double envelopment on them and the game's over. And they bring in the cavalry. And of course, where's the cavalry? Well, it's right back here. I mean, he's, Morgan's got his cavalry waiting. And now we're off the road. The road's to our right. We're on the park trail. And we're walk, kind of going, you know, as if the British were walking. We're doing the British walk. And back here in this field, guess who's, guess who's in reserve? Washington's cavalry. Lieutenant Colonel Washington. Um, so he's, he's back here. And they're waiting, and they've got a bunch of guys waiting back here. And they're going to wait and crash into the British as soon as things start getting disordered. Because when you're, you know, combined arms, use your artillery to break them up, your rifle fire to disorder them, and then hammer them with the cavalry. I mean, they didn't, the, the Continentals didn't have artillery, and the British had two light artillery pieces. And I think the British may have captured those. But they had these two light artillery pieces and some artillery men, about 18 of them. And this cavalry comes crashing into them. And things start getting crazy. Now the cavalry engaged early too. I, I know that when the, I think when the, when the, when the um, British originally attacked the first skirmish line, I think the cavalry went into them. This is the campaign map. And this just shows you what was going on? These guys were 
what was trying, what was happening was the British, and I think what their plan was here was to catch the, to catch the Continentals, you know, just catch them, don't let them get across the river, get them to panic, get them to, get them to, get them to, um, get them to give up, break them. This is the march to break them, and you can see this campaign map, and it ends up right there, Yorktown, and Cowpens was a big part of that. Of course, you had Kings Mountain, which isn't very far from here either. There's another victory for the, overwhelming victory for the Continentals. So. And then here's Morgan's report, which said that um, the enemy, that the um, enemy lost about 110. And they believe they captured about 500. Wow, 800 muskets too. See, I didn't. One traveling forge. I, I imagine they must have had those. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the Battle of Cowpens. Thanks a lot for watching.